of the most requested topics in Brutal Age is... What's up everybody? This is Easy, Easy Street Gaming. Bring you another Brutal Age video. It is... How do I safely attack another player in war? No, you don't nuke him. But... I believe I have the perfect attack. Thanks to 323's Vortmos. Spent a little time with Vortmos, and he's gone over this attack with me thoroughly. I hope, hopefully, I can relay it. Here's Vortmos. If this tactic works for you, you can just thank him. And if someone uses this ta tactic against you, blame Vortmos. That's what I do. I will break this down step by step for everybody. It's not really that complicated, but I'll probably make it a little confusing. <laughs> step one, find a target. Bookmark several potential targets. And if you're gonna scout the target during a war, it would be best to have a low power player scout them so they don't get scared and bubble up. We're gonna use Vortmos for this example right here, even though he's in my clan. Step two, and this is very important, set your runes to attack. If you've watched any of the videos in the past, I like to use the one troop method. So basically I'll use one type of troop. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use shaman troops. So I'm going to set the runes for shaman attack. We'll speed through it a little bit right here. So it looks like I have 10% shaman attack boost plus another 10% from a two star title that I have. So I'll have 20% shaman attack and that's not counting whatever boost that I have from the buildings step three and this is huge set a fake rally now this is the key to the entire attack uh, don't share the fake rally with the clan now if you don't know what a fake rally is uh, most people in your clan will it's just setting a rally that you're not actually gonna carry through uh, you're going to go for an 8 hour rally with the exact partners, dragon kin, and troops that you were going to use to attack with. Remember, it's going to be the exact troops. So, in this example, I have a 205,000 um, march. Uh, a few tips. Don't send all 205,000 of your best troops because many of them are going to die. Um, use at least 5 to 10% T1s in there with the T3, 4, or 5s that you're going to attack with. Also, you have to remember your restraints. I'm using all shaman, so I want to make sure I get the boost for my partners. This can get really confusing for, for a lot of people, so if you are not positive that all of your heroes will live through the, bat the hero battle, use four, and in, in the case of the shaman, use four blues. If you think that they're all going to survive, then you can split it up and you can use two blue partners with plus morale for your team. And then you'll use, in the shaman's case, use two red partners, which will be, that is minus morale for the enemy beast riders, uh, beast masters. Because the beast masters restrain the shaman, you want to punish the beast masters as much as possible with your, with the morale boost that will help you win that. Now, when you're choosing your partners, double check the morale adjustments that they're all going to make. Do you, I mean, do you really know who beats who and, and what kind of bonuses do they give? Because your army restraints and partner restraints, are, are they're a little different from each other. Um, blue Shaman beats the Green Warriors. The Green Warriors beat the Red Beastmaster. And the Beastmaster Red beats the Blue Shaman. So that's just the opposite of the partner restraints. In this example here, I'm using all blue or wise partners that will give a plus morale to my shaman. But I could also use one or two red partners that will give a minus morale to the enemy because we want to restrain the beast master, which is who can actually restrain the shaman. So kind of complex, but we'll explain that a little bit more towards the end of the video. I have to put a lot of focus on partners. You've got to win the partner battles. You've really got to win the partner battles. So step four. You want to hide all your troops, and this is very important. Um, it has a couple options to it. The first option is if you have, if you're in war and you have a hive, then you want to hide all your troops and reinforce other players that have uh, shields, have a bubble. Uh, remember, you can have people watching you, so act like you're hiding your troops and you're not literally preparing for an attack. Um, and now this part here looks kind of like you're preparing for an attack so it, this can kind of give it away But if you have no options, you can also send 
all of your marches except for that one that you're using the fake rally on you can send them all off to monsters off in the corner try to make sure that they are all being sent from the same outpost it's very important you send them all from the same outpost and try to get it, make it towards like an hour walk away to get to the monsters so a few things you want to do while you're hiding your troops you may want you may need to incre increase your march side size you may need to add an extra march um, like I have a 1.2 million t4 so I have to hide so I have to do both in order to hide them all um, you may have to buy the increase March 25% and it can be bought with gems you can increase uh, your actual March Q uh, buy that with gems too more spending gems <laughs> And again hide them all from one outpost um, If you have an outpost in the hive that would be your best option you'll, you'll probably have to use an advanced teleport if you're going to do a one tile attack Which is what I'm suggesting you'll need an advanced teleport if you're going to be attacking someone that's a different color than you are If you're attacking the same horde that you're that you're in you can use a friendly and you can get one tile away But you'll need an advanced if they're in another horde um, once all your troops are safe and you have your fake rally set you want to make sure once again make sure you set your fake rally with the same exact troops that you want to attack with same everything and make sure you send your fake rally from the same outpost that you're hiding all your other troops from a good example is if it's outpost one is in the hive you send everything from outpost one and that way you'll be able to teleport with outpost two three or four and you won't have a problem there So a little recap, I, I did this a couple times. Step one, find a target. Ask clanmates with much less power than you to scout them if needed. Step two, set your runes and talents if needed. Set them to whatever troop that you are going to attack with. If you're just starting out, try to use one troop. It's a little simpler to do that. Step three, set a fake rally with the exact attack formation, the exact numbers of troops that you're going to attack with. Step four, hide troops and hide all of them if you can. Uh, increase your, your march size and number if needed. Step five, you're gonna teleport one t tile away for the big attack. If you've never attacked before, this is really really nerve wracking. Once you teleport right next to your opponent, you wanna you wanna do all this lightning fast because if they catch you trying to, to attack them, they may try to attack you right back and catch you on the way back into the house. And uh, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more next video. Uh, but we still got more so so hang with me so the second you teleport you have to do these next few steps uh, uh, like I said before lightning fast step six recall that fake rally you're gonna call the fake rally back and they're gonna instantly be back in your outpost step seven attack when you click attack your recalled March will queue up and it will be the exact army that you need. It will have the dragon can. It will have all of the troops that you set up. It will have all your partners that you set up. It will have everything already set up for you. That's why you do the fake march. It's already going to be all set up for you. Don't hesitate. Don't scout them again. Uh, unless you know they're not online. For whatever reason. If you know they're offline. Then maybe you scout them again to make sure that their clan is not helping them out. But you want to do this all so fast that their clan can't reinforce them. Now after you attack. You need to get safe as soon as possible. What you want to do is you only have one march that you have to protect so send that march back on a fake rally or bubble up literally the second you get your troops home personally i would like you know you probably want to shield and just watch the campfire and let's pause for one second i just want to make this last point if you are in distress and you think they're going to attack you right back uh, you get alarmed set the fake rally for the target you just attacked for eight hours just set it on someone really fast that way you don't get attacked right back um, I know you may want to set it on someone else, but, uh, but you can set it right on the target you just attacked if you have to. So let's recap for a minute. Again, <laughs> some visuals might help you remember everything. First, you want to find a target, and if you need to have it scouted, ask the lower members in your clan to scout it. That way you don't scare them off, and they're not behind a shield the next time you look at them. That's something that we've been doing, and, and uh, it works really well, believe it or not. <clears throat> Second, you want to go and change your runes, your talent, if needed. You may need to add another march queue. You may need to increase your march size. You may need to add the 25% march size. Do all those things to fit all of your troops in the marches that you have available. Third, set up a fake rally. Use the exact army composition that you plan on attacking with. Remember, 
Use some T1 in there with your best troops. Match partners to the bo to boost your troops or restrain the troops that restrain your troops. <laughs> now I've changed the troops here to give you another example. Here we have 200,000 T4 warriors, 20,000 T1 warriors, two gr two green partners to boost our morale, and two blue partners to decrease the morale of the enemy shaman because the shaman can beat the warriors. So let's quickly look at the restraints because this can be very confusing. Um, you have certain partners that regardless of what call they are, they will lower the enemy's morale. Uh, daggers is one of them. Other partners, regardless of their color, will always boost your army's morale. And uh, Nomad is a good example of one of them. So you have partners that will always decrease the enemy's morale. You have partners that will always increase your morale. Now in the in the partner duel, blue partners win in the restraint battle against red partners. Blue beats red against it with the heroes, and then and then red beats green, and then green beats blue. But here's where a lot of people get confused. Blue partners win against red partners. Red partners win against green. Green partners win against blue. But the blue shaman win against the green warriors. And the Red Beastmaster armies win against the Blue Shaman, and the Green Warrior armies win against the Red Beastmaster. So the army restraints are exactly opposite of the partner restraints. Thank you, Brutal Age. The restraints just take a little getting used to it. I know you'll, you'll get it. So fourth, either reinforce shield the clanmates in your hive, or send troops all the way off to the corners of the map onto monsters. And here you see how I'm reinforcing my clanmates in the, in the hive, or I'm sending them off to monsters. Fifth, once all troops are hid and your attack army is in a fake rally, teleport one tile from the target. Sixth, recall your fake rally. And that very second, your army should queue up for you just like it did, just like it was in the fake rally. And seventh, attack after the attack. Send the troops back into a fake rally or use a shield. That way they can't attack you back. If it's a little confusing, do what I did, write down the steps, and you'll get it, and you'll really like it. You'll be able to attack people without much worry about uh, the consequences, you'll go crazy. Next video, I'll explain the best time to attack. There's actually specific times where it's better to attack than others. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you guys can get something from it, and I don't just confuse you more. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel, come visit me down on Patreon, all the links are down below. So. Till next time, it's been easy. Take care, everybody. Part took 345 takes, it should be a little different.